shot down the 20th of July, 1953. Would you tell us what happened on your last mission? I had taken off as the flight leader in the 4th uh, 86s on a mission uh, up in Northern Korea. We were protecting uh, some fighter bombers uh, on their mission. In route, I had some mechanical trouble and dropped two boys off. I continued on with uh, my number three man who took the number two slot, Captain Thomas Wade. We got up there and uh, we heard uh, the nigs were coming off some of the airfields in uh, just inside of Manchuria. And, uh, but at the same time, we heard a little uh, emergency going on amongst another flight. So we attempted to give them some assistance as it turned out didn't need any. So we returned to where we thought the nigs were and we saw them down fairly low. Captain McQuaid, myself, and I peeled off and dove down from about 25,000 feet. I nailed one MiG with a pretty good burst, and he flamed up and wobbled a little bit and went to the deck. I continued to do a right-hand turn, took a couple of snapshots and two more, and I observed just one or two hits on another MiG. And uh, I continued my right-hand turn, heading for the southwest out towards the ocean, because we were pretty much outnumbered. About that time, I had a nasty break. I got hit by ground black, which knocked out part of my controls, and it was getting progressively worse. So uh, I looked over at Captain McQuaid, and he had some makes, and he was pretty much trouble. About that time, he said I had a make of my tail, which I hadn't seen as at that time. But in the meantime, the controls were getting worse and worse, and I uh, finally had to bail out. I bailed out about 11,000 feet. I landed at the goal about half a mile off the mouth of the Yellow River. Uh, I landed in the water without much sweat, got out of all, all my gear. I noticed this uh, Korean sandpan was coming up and they had a couple of Chinese in there with burp pens. They picked me up and took me back to this little uh, spit of land there. They uh, hauled me back to a little farmhouse and they tried some kind of a small interrogation which uh, I could see wasn't going to be the efficient type so not much sweat to fool. However, from there on, we stopped at four or five, six little Korean hovels and fixed eyes and a few other places. What prison camp did they take you to, uh, Major? They finally took me to a camp we estimated to be just uh, south of Sinuiju. And I uh, spent about, oh, about ten days or so there, mostly in solitary and being interrogated all the time. When did you find out that the truce had been signed? I found out approximately the 15th of August. They kept you in solitary up until the 15th of August. That's correct. Then they told you about the truce being signed. That's correct. What was your reaction to the war being over, Major? I'm uh, very happy. I uh, very fortunate getting shot down towards the end of the war. It's, you can say that I'm very fortunate. But uh, I knew there would be a lot of happy families all over, including my own. I was kind of sweating out a few things, but I knew that all over the world would be a lot of people who, who uh, would say amen to this little practice. Well, Major Bettinger, there's been a little private war going on in the 4th Fighter Interceptor Wing, and uh, Colonel Thomas D. D. Garnett of 2405 California Street, Huntington Park, California. Your group commander is here to tell you about that. Well, after hearing Major Bettinger's stories like putting two and two together, uh, Captain Quaid, uh, Major Bettinger's wingman, pretty well confirmed everything that uh, Steve has brought out. Uh, knowing that uh, Major Bettinger was coming out, we sent our group and told this officer over to let uh, Major Bettinger submit his claim. And uh, today, we had a board action on his claim, and it was approved, making Major Bettinger's fifth kill, making him the 39th jet ace in the Korean War. Thank goodness you got us through the day. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Major Bettinger. Thank you. Thank you. Good news. Well, thank you very much, Major Bettinger, for your interview, and also you, Colonel Thomas D. D. Garnett. You have just heard Major Stephen L. Bettinger from the Prisoner of War Repatriation Camp in Incheon, Korea, shortly before he embarked on the last leg of his journey from a communist prison camp in North Korea to his home in Denver, Colorado. Major, how about saying hello to your wife, Elaine, in Denver? Sure will. Hi, Elaine, and I'll be home about two weeks, and I'll say hello in person.